So, what am I doing today? On the nursery, many people think that it's always about playing with trees, pruning trees, shaping trees. But even the boss like me have to go around the nursery, sweeping the nursery. So it's not as simple a life as you think it is. So apart from sweeping, look at the debris I was sweeping just a half an hour ago. So let me show you what we have to do at this time of the year. It's one of those jobs that you can't put off. There are a lot of pruning to do, and you must be wondering why I don't do it the rest of the year. There's very good reason because I always go this point. So this has been grown. This is a Korean hornbeam. I'm going for taper. So you see how the taper is made over there. And because I don't want to waste it, this is a very rare tree. I'm going to air it from there and I'll get another uh, hornbeam from there. But I don't want these branches to be too long. So this is going to be kept aside for air layering. Literally in about six weeks or two months time, I will be doing air layering to it. So I'm just pruning some of these back so it can produce ramification. So as we grow, you can see how the taper is being created. So that's that. Now, another tree that you will see lying around the nursery, things like that. We let it grow to get strong. And then when we feel it's strong enough, this is pyracanther, I then prune it back to shape. Now this is a bit strong, so I'm going to prune this long shoot back. As tall as that. Pyracantha in the UK is a bit sensitive to frost and cold. So they need some protection. So that's what I pruned back there. So you can see how much I've taken off. Now these are crab apples that we grow from seeds. So can you see how tall they are? See, it's almost like two meter tall, you know. So this is all one year's growth. All that is one year's growth. And if you keep letting it grow, it'll reach the sky. So last year it was cut there. I'm going to cut it there this year. So all these crab apples, I don't want them to grow that tall. So we have to head it back to produce branching. If you don't do this general pruning, you don't get these shrubs or trees to produce side shoots. So this is a general principle that is worth knowing. So all these tall trees, we prune back like that. Uh, so this is a very general sort of chore that we're doing. Uh, let me look at some other things. Now, this for instance, the trident maple. It's a magnificent tree and you must be wondering how I get this ramification. So to do that, I just go around the ends and keep doing this. I do this all the time, even in the summer I do it. But this is a tree that I don't want to grow any taller, so I stopped it here. I'm not going to keep adding more and more taper. This is where the taper will end. So it is just pruning the fine twigs and not letting any more strong shoots grow because I don't want to add taper. I don't want the tree to get too tall. So this is just showing you the point. This will probably take me 10 minutes to do the whole tree because there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of little shoots that I have to prune the ends of. So this is a very, very routine job that one is always, always doing. Now let's go to another one. This is the Dawn Redwood that I grew from a long twiggy tree. This is probably the 15th year of training. You can see where it was chopped there. If you come to the back, you can see that big cut. So that is where I chopped it initially after making an air layering. And the air layering was earlier twice. So I've got three trees out of it. So that's how I add the taper, chop there, more taper, chop there, and that's where it ends. So all these ends, I'm going to head back to produce more ramification. So ramification, lots is written about it, a lot of mystique to it, but generally speaking, it is just the process of pruning the tips and 
by pruning the tips you get more bud break and that's how you get the fine twigs forming like so those that are sprouting up I can wire if I don't want too many branches I can take that off this was only produced last year so you can see how vigorous these trees are extremely vigorous see some of them have to be wired down so you have to constantly wire and rewire to get the shape you want because the natural tendency of all plants is to spring upwards so all these i'll probably have to use thicker wire and wire it down so this is how i deal with this one now i need to say something about these horse chestnut this is not a very good example because this is a red horse chestnut very tempting to leave the shoots untouched but you should take it off because if you don't take it off now it will just get extended but if you take it off now, you will encourage side shoots to grow. So you've got to sacrifice some of this. I will show you on a bigger one too. This is privet. Privet is so prolific. All these hedging plants, you have to constantly do this all the time. See this uh, Zelkova serrata again, all the ends. Keep trimming, keep trimming. These are maples. Maples, of course, the only way to get ramification is to constantly, constantly cut back the tips. Cut back the tips. No substitute for that. A lot of people think that ramification occurs naturally without any effort. It does. Now look at this hornbeam. That branch is coming back on itself. It's going the wrong way. I've got to be a bit severe and take it back to there. And all the tips again, headed back a couple of inches to create more density. So all these maples, you have to do the same. Can you see hundreds of them? That keep me busy. So even a tree like this, where there is already quite good ramification. This is a Korean hornbeam. And all that ramification is achieved by constantly pruning the ends. Just tipping it, tipping it. At random. Just have an eye on the overall shape. And that's how it's created. And again, see how we create taper. You can see how we've cut it and then the new leader takes place. You will notice, I'll just point out, that I haven't sealed some of these trees. If you don't seal the trees, it doesn't come to any harm. It'll make the natural hollows. So, so all these hollows are not achieved by carving. They're just left unsealed and they will make the hollows on their own. Automatically, it will be created. I will show you another tree. If you come along with me, uh, we let the hollow develop on its own. See, this is one case here, look. See, this how, when it heals over, you get the hollow effect. That has been cut, it's not sealed. Now, this is a very, very good example. This is an ancient Chinese elm that we have. We never seal the cut, so it makes these hollow features which you will find in nature, which is much more pleasing than having to uh, seal it and getting it to heal over. So this will become completely hollow, natural feature. I will show you another one which is very, very natural. These features come about just letting the wood rot. They are not sealed when the cut is made. We did a little experiment. In fact, this is Padma Priya's work. He used a type of paste to put over the cut, which was done to a big Japanese maple. And you see how the callus forms there. Once it forms, it will carry on forming and it will heal over eventually. All this will heal over eventually. On some maples, I will show you this very big one, which I used the crowbar to make this tree, if you remember. Now this one, if you come around this side, this is that cut paste we use, called a black balsam. You can see how the callus is forming. It does help the callus to form and it'll heal over completely. But where I didn't put paste, look at this one. I'm letting this form 
a hollow naturally. So sometimes you don't have to put paste on it and just let the things hollow themselves out naturally. I will show you one very big horse chestnut. Now this horse chestnut must be every bit 35 or 40 years old. And look at the ramification on this. But even though it's got a lot of ramification, I will still have to go through, especially the extremities of all these sticky buds. We call them sticky buds because just before the leaves come out, they give a sap which is very sticky. That's why they're called sticky buds. So that's how I deal with my conker trees. In, in England, we call these conker trees. Horse chestnut, Aeschylus hippocasternum. So this is the treatment we do to horse chestnut to increase ramification. And again, if you see what I'm doing, I did use some cut paste on it. And you see how it's callousing, but where the wood is very thick, that will eventually rot. And I look forward to having a nice hollow in there. And see the nebari is quite nice on that. I love these so-called native trees because in England they grow very naturally into mighty great big trees with a massive canopy and spread. What else can I show you? Ah, while we're here, look at this. This is Cornus Mass, Cornelian Cherry. If you home in Look at how delicate the flowers are, absolutely divine. It's about 30 or 40 flowers in one head and they're scented. They are scented and they have little red berries which are called cherries and that's why it's called Cornelian cherry. Now this juniper, while we're talking about following trunk, look at this feature here. This was carved very early on but not sealed and see how they're wood is rolling over. If you don't watch it, the callus will roll over and join up again. So if you wanted that feature to be permanent, you have to keep carving it. Keep carving it. And that of course is a mighty great big three to five hundred year old juniper. This is not a tanuki, all this is live vein. Live vein. I own this tree from 1974, but it now belongs to another customer. So this is just a quick tour, another little chore. This is a great big mighty trident. Look at what I have to do now. I have to just go around all these long shoots. You see, there's got beautiful ramification, but the ramification is created by constantly doing this. All the time going around doing this. If you get any strong rogue shoots, you've got to cut the strong ones out so that you just encourage the young twigs to develop. Occasionally you get a very thick shoot. If there are crossing branches, I try to deal with it. And this has got intense ramification, really beautiful ramification on the tree. And this is simply achieved by constantly, constantly pruning, like so. Anything going vertically upwards, we take out. From time to time, we may need to put some wire on to take the branches down or put a piece of bamboo and weigh the branches down like that. But this is certainly a very good example of how to create ramification. And for those of you who want to know whether these trees are protected, I find that tried maples, when they're in large pots like this, they are not protected and this winter we've had a very harsh winter in the south of England where we had temperatures of minus seven and I believe at Wisley where we have some of our trees the temperature went to minus ten and all our trees are not protected they're left right through the winter unprotected in the open and they all survive extremely well so this is almost the last week in February and we've had a very mild spell when we had yesterday temperature of 16 degrees. So they are starting to break bud. So 
this is the sort of chore we have to keep doing before they come into leaf. But you, if you home in closely, you can see that they're starting to break bud already. You see the green tips of the shoots all breaking bud. So this is a very exciting time of the year. But there's a lot of work to do. And this is the main chore at this time of the year. So while we're here, let's look at some of the other. That big maple too. This was that chicken plucker tree about five or six years ago. I did a lot of leaf plucking in the summer. No, it couldn't be that much because I showed it in a video about four years ago. And I called it plucking the leaves or plucking the feathers like you would pluck a chicken. So we call this a chicken plucker tree. I love trees this size. You know, not everyone can handle trees this size, but for exhibitions, this is a beautiful size of maple. This is the back, by the way. The front is the other side. So during the growing season, we do turn the trees around so it gets light from every side. If you don't have light from every side, then the tree will become one-sided and you will get problems of not having enough branches on the back side. One final thing to show you. We have a lot of trident maples on the nursery. And this is a typical example of how we develop both the taper this tree was imported from japan 30 years ago up to here and all this was grown the taper was grown on the nursery over 30 years so it's a long period of time but every year again tedious chore but i don't regard it as a chore because i enjoy doing it this is what we do cut it back don't let these twigs go vertical encourage them to go horizontal and this is how we make the ramification of these trees. You see how long some of these trees are? I'll just pluck one or cut one of this. And they all will go, look at that, that's at least almost 50 centimeters, 60 centimeters long. You will get shoots as long as that. I let it grow to strengthen the plant, but I can't leave it there indefinitely. They have to be cut back, and we're cutting it back to create a pad horizontal pad. Some of these tricks you can wire if you so desire. But the object is to keep it going horizontally. These are our long-term projects. Many people are, you know, curious as to why I don't always rush to sell these trees. Many of these trees are grown on our nursery as part of long-term experiments because most of my knowledge has been acquired by just doing things and experimenting and discovering how certain trees grow, what you do in such certain situations and if you do certain things to certain trees, why will it do this or do that? So it's a learning experience developed simply by experimentation. And that is the great fun of the sort of bonsai I do. Most of my tree work is as experiments. And that gives me a lot of satisfaction and pleasure. Observing how trees grow and observing what will happen if I do this or do that. And nothing could be more satisfying. Because I always maintain that in different countries, Trees behave in a certain way. While they may grow in Japan in a certain regime, the fact that they are brought into the UK doesn't mean that it will continue to produce the effects they do in Japan. Now look at another feature I will show you here. Look at this great big Nipari here. This was a root. I let it rot. And this rotting has created a hole here. That's going to be a beautiful feature. I just let it not rot naturally. I may cut that off to create Nibari. So I, again, I'm not in a rush to seal that. Same with this one here. Look at this one. There's another trident maple. And you see the beautiful features, you see? So you see how the Nibari is forming on this? Now looking and beautiful whole features, what the Japanese call Uro, U-R-O, Uro. 
And all these vertical grain branches have to be cut so that they go horizontal. And this is how ramification is created. So it's really, really simple. Not rocket science, certainly not rocket science. Although people may like to kid you into thinking that it is very complicated, it is not. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video.